Alright, my little trolls, I get it. You want a rock concert? You asked enough times. I get it. You want everything you missed in Trolls World Tour. So, I'm going to show you all the secrets that I found, and that is a pinky promise. A pinky promise. So put your hands together, just as you let's for Universal's Trolls World Tour. You remember Branch from Trolls, right? Well, he was a very grumpy troll that didn't seem to care about anyone except for himself, but if you notice, he's grown a lot since then. When they're flying in Sheila Balloon, he brings out a bucket full of weapons, and they're all cheap basic weapons that were handmade. Even the lame little rocks, they're just rocks, he did nothing to them. But before, if you remember, this is the same troll that has all sorts of weapons, including a cannon. Well, he still keeps his favorite pair of brass knuckles, at least. But since the Bergens are no longer a threat, he decided to give up all of his weapon storages, and he uses that space now for extra room for storing food. He even has his own daily planner to get more food. But if you remember in Trolls, his doormat said, go away. Now in Trolls World Tour, it now says, if you look closely, please go away. Please! Also, fun fact, in most places, brass knuckles are illegal! If you haven't seen the movie yet, here's the basic story plot. It's a story as old as time. It's a story as old as time. As old as time, beauty and the beast. Anyways, this story is about as old as Marvel. Watch, you have all these worlds living in peace and harmony, kumbaya, and hugs and dances and hugs and dances. <laughs> Everything is going just fine. They have six powerful strings. Six. Scattered all over the universe, so one person can't... That was two. So one person can't capture all the power of all six strings and destroy life as we know it. Hmm. Well, that sounds familiar. But then, later on, we have a bad guy who wants to collect all six of these strings to kill all music. So basically, this is a cartoon version of Marvel's Avengers Infinity War. Okay, but this is just getting confusing. If there's six strings and only six styles of music have those six strings, and without the strings they can't sing, then how in the troll world do the bounty hunters sing if they don't get their own strings? And why didn't Poppy know about the string in the first place? What other secrets is King Poppy not telling her? a little bit hypocritical to say that all music should be love for its own style. Differences don't matter. But then they go on to say that disco is outdated. Yeah, I think your map is a bit outdated. Hmm. Oh, he's right. Look at that. It still has disco. Can't we love disco? In case you didn't know this, there was a short film called Trolls Holiday, and they took place after Trolls, but before Trolls World Tour. And if you watch Trolls Holiday, then you already know that Bridget is Poppy's best friend. Poppy continued on her quest for her BFF Bridget. They clearly clarified that they're best friends several times. And why are we doing this? Bridget is my best friend. So then why in the world today is Poppy trying to make Barb her best friend? Dear Barb, I can't wait to meet you. I have tons of great party ideas. I like that. Maybe you and I can even be best friends. Best friends? Is she making fun of me? And what about Branch? Is he not her best friend? Honestly, I'm not sure why he even tries to be her friend. This girl is crazy. Or then why doesn't the queen of the pop trolls just ask the Bergens to help him out with the rock troll problem? They could literally just start up the eating trolls tradition. Remember troll sis? That's yummy. Then they could just go around eating the rock trolls. Bam, problem solved. But since Barb is supposed to be the queen of rock, then it makes sense that the costume she's chosen for her grand finale song to snap her finger and bring all the trolls together. Well, that outfit is probably most known for being worn by the king of rock, Elvis Presley. Only they shredded the cape a little bit and made it a little bit gothish. <laughs> Hickory was also a good bad guy, but he was also voiced by Sam Rockwell, who's been in a lot of movies and video games, but you may know him as Darwin from G-Force. Hey, I'm nine inches tall. I only see the upside. 
and Tiny Diamond is a new character who might have stolen the show with his cuteness and glitter. But he was also voiced by Kenan Thompson. You probably remember him from the movie Good Burger, but he probably doesn't want you to remember that he was also in the movie Snakes on a Plane. And if you ask me, I'd say Trolls was way better than Trolls World Tour and had way more creativity with their songs. These songs were mostly just remade songs that have already been around for decades. Even the mind behind the Trolls World Tour thinks that their songs weren't very hard to make. The songs like that, they either can take like years to make or just like minutes. And that was one that just happened in minutes. Wow. Deep. One thing that they did do though is get a bunch of famous voices to play for the characters. Like for instance, King Trollix is played by Anthony Ramos. We will not go quietly. This musical piece is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. You should probably listen to that if you're stressed out. And then Trolls Art is a play on the composer Mozart. And he, of course, is another famous classical composer. And get this, his voice was voiced by Gustavo Dubamemel. And that guy is a real life composer for movies like Star Wars and The Nutcracker. Then, of course, one of the pioneers of heavy metal, you have to give credit to, is Ozzy Osbourne himself. And in another movie, he was the voice of Fawn, and that was in Nomeo and Juliet. And now in this movie, he's the voice of King Thrash. And one of his most known songs is probably Crazy Train. So when the gang is coming out of the water, that is exactly what you hear being played. And if you followed Ozzy Osbourne long enough, you know he's also famous for biting the head off a bat. <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I went there. I pictured it, it was a real bat. Was it alive? Well, it was till I bit the head of it, you know? And yes, the bat died. Ironically, this movie chose a bat to be the bat messenger instead of the traditional messenger pigeon. What did they do to you, my hairy little baby? Come here, come here, come here. Harley. Not so much of a coincidence if you ask me. I mean, the taste of bats is very salty. Then King Quincy is the king of funk, and he is voiced by George Clinton, who is also known as Dr. Funkenstein, or also known as the king of funk in real life. Then no king would be a good king without a good queen, and Queen Essence is voiced by Mary J. Blige. Delta Dawn was the voice of the famous country singer Kelly Clarkson. There's a lot more famous voices in this movie, but I'm not gonna bore you with an entire list. So just here you go. Screenshot it, read it, memorize it, do what you gotta do. Here. Also, compared to the first movie, King Poppy aged stupid fast, but if you watch when he throws that cane, you will notice that the cane is actually alive, running away as fast as it can. If you waited and watched all the fancy credits, you will see a mid credit scene. That's kind of borderline. Oh, Grithy, I guess we're late to the party. My oh, balls! Grissy? But who's gonna eat my cheese balls, babe? Until next time, subscribe so you don't miss our next adventure and let me know what movie you think should be our next adventure. But remember, most importantly of all, gents and gentlemen, share a smile, they are contagious. Glitter bomb!